victories. And this coaching staff has to be pleased with how their defense played last week. They held their opponents to three points, and that was it. They get anything comparable to that performance, this one's in the bag. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. They'll come out in the pistol. On first and ten, Hackenberg. On the right side, caught by Green. A gain of six there on first. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Virgil Green is tight end, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. A look at the starting side for the offense and Brandon Marshall. I think the thing that impresses me most about Brandon how it's so tough to keep him from getting the football. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Hackenberg from the gun on third. And he fires one, but incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Now Hackenberg into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Kevin Minter. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Well, surprise, surprise, partner. No, we know it's not a surprise. When you try to complete a pass against this Cardinals defense, there's a reason that they are known as the no-fly zone. It's complete to Jerron Brown. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one because to me, when that happens, key guys are out. The next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself all the way through. No excuses for guys being out. Finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them. And we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Stanton. And this is going to be incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target. And it's fourth down. On fourth down, the Cards will call on Chandler Catanzaro to try and put up three. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And the Cardinals have the first points. It's 3-0. And the first three points of the night belong to our home team as they get the field goal on the game's initial drive. A good, solid drive. It didn't wind up in the end zone, but that's okay. You've got something positive on the board, and you got the early lead. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Everything about that play was beautiful. A great corner route where the receiver worked the defensive back inside and then broke back to the outside to the corner. But how about the throw by the quarterback? Anticipation on the break from inside to outside. He threw the football. As the receiver turned around, the ball greeted him. And here is the Cardinal defense. Patrick Peterson is almost an anomaly at cornerback. A big, thick, physical guy who can run with any receiver in the league. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Here we go now. Three, 19. On 
Second down, Hackenberg again. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Henry, the lone man in the backfield. He's going to get the football. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a Not just a big, big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> on third down, Hackenberg. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. They come out with one back and three tight ends. To throw is Hackenberg. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. A surprising move to go for it, and predictably, at least somewhat predictably, it doesn't pay off. And the Cardinals will now take over with excellent field position. A first down carry here for Johnson. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Second and five. Have you talked with your friends who are in the fantasy leagues? I keep hearing David Johnson's name is coming up in a big way. Boy, he was a steal third rounder out of Northern Iowa. And I think last year started as a fourth string back, didn't he? He certainly did, but boy, he produces the year one out. Remember, he can run it, he can catch it. He was a wide receiver at Northern Iowa before he became a running back and also has great kick return ability. Ran one back for a touchdown in 2015. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. A solid run on first down, gain of seven. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Cardinals in possession of the football. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Now Stanton. Fitzgerald's got it right side. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Here we go now. Boom, right it. They'll run it now out of the gun. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now, that was a good job by the defense swarming to the football. And you know it's no cinch that you're going to be able to get the ball into the end zone against them. They're number two against the run. So what's an offensive coordinator to do? Check your playlist. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Partner, I know we're in the era of the mobile quarterback, but there's still an element of surprise when that position keeps the football. And what a nice gain on that play. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Let's face it. Perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. And Captain Zero's kick is right through. And that will make it six to nothing. So that scores now on their first two possessions, but it's 6 nothing. probably not the kind of scores they were hoping for. No, not at all, but I think that they've shown that they can have some success against this defense. So they'll go back to the sideline knowing the points are going to be there for the taking. The Cardinal defense, they head out to get set here. The crew that got the stop last time led to three points. Uh, well, that's good, but they're probably thinking, hey, we'll get you to stop again offense. You get us a touchdown here. <laughs> Just add to the points total, right? But the defense has to have a ton of confidence. Someone goes for it against you on their own side of the 50. <laughs> no, 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 no. Stuff them, turn over the offense, and you're right. They'll take three on the first time. They do it again, though. They expect a touchdown. Yeah, well, first they've got to do it. Let's see if they can. Green's got it over the middle. 
And they're able to get this one across the 35. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. To Decker over the middle. Give him nine there on the first down completion. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Hackenberg on second down. Trying to get it to Thomas and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tyvon Branch. And his guys will take over at their... First half. More from the desert after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have highlights and analysis of this first half. I'm guessing mostly defensive highlights that we will see. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. No touchdown scored yet so far. Yeah, none whatsoever. Fresh set of downs here. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on at its second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Green with a catch left side. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 11 on the game there. And it's first down, New York. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll take a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer. He just dropped the pass. In most pass defenses, the guy playing safety has the ability to roam free and try and go to the football. But when you're a man, you've got to cover just like a guy playing out on the corner. Lock up on the receiver and go to the football. That's exactly what he did, batting that one away. They try the corner route there, Charles, and it works to perfection. Boy, that's hard on a defensive back because if you get any faker move to the inside, you have to respect it, and then the receiver breaks back to the sideline. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Their big tight end, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jets can take the lead now with the extra point. And that one will give them the lead here as we approach halftime. Folk now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Stanton. Underneath for Johnson. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. He'll look to throw. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. 
Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now Stanton. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. They stop troops. They're enjoying things right now. They've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Oh, when this ball's tipped and intercepted, picked off by Marcus Williams. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Jets on top. As we send you on to Orlando, we hook back up with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. And Larry, apparently very brief in his report. Thanks anyway, my man, as we're already set for action. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10th. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And they start the second half with Johnson. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. He'll drop the throw. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. And that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down, or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Fitzgerald's got it right side. He's at the 30. Touchdown, Cardinals. Larry Fitzgerald, 77 yards. And the Cardinals have retaken the lead. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Here's the Cardinals' defense as they head out to set up shop. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Jets 
Jets offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The pro bowler, Calais Campbell, in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. I don't care if you're taking it in round one, you're undrafted, whatever. As a rookie quarterback in this league, you're going to have games where you face adversity like this. Lessons. All the time you're going to face these lessons. The key for this guy is, will he be able to bounce back in the next one? Because right now, this has not been his game. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his... Looking for Marshall, but it's intercepted. Picked up by D.J. Swearinger. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. Partner, when you're playing cover... set to take the field. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A big play that time on the catch and run. 36 yards. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. But run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. And, this and he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Now Folk for the extra point. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. second down and he's got Decker left side and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line and a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage both of them read how much yardage they needed figured what they had to do and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion and it's incomplete boy he doesn't drop many like that one second down and on second and ten now On second down, Hackenberg again. Green's got it over the middle. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And that's why defensive coaches preach swarming to the football. It's usually going to take more than one guy to get that big man down. Yeah, they did right there. Multiple broken tackles, but they eventually get him down. And caught right side, Green. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 
And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And, Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games. Split your road games. Kick off your week by installing your game plan.
Kick off your week by installing your game plan.
everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. The Jets come into today's matchup wanting to find a way to walk out of the stadium with win number five on the season. It's the Ravens going up against the Jets. So with kickoff approaching, let's send it over to our commentators here this afternoon, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Today, we've got a matchup here in pivotal week seven between the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Jets. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Terrence West. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Second down, Flacco now. And he will find his man on the outside. That catch good for five. It's third down. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. Leonard Williams was one of the top draft picks coming out of USC. And he's done nothing to diminish the comparisons people make of past greats. Third play here. This opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Third down. Flacco from the gun. He's got time in the pocket, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. Fielded at the 20. <laughs> 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by the all-time passing leader in Penn State history, the rookie quarterback, Christian Hackenberg. I remember watching Christian Hackenberg when he's a freshman at Penn State, and I thought this guy truly has a great opportunity to be a future first-round draft choice in the NFL. It didn't happen, but the potential is still there. He looks, moves, and acts like a starting quarterback. And this one complete to Virgil Green. Good use of the pass there to pick up the first down against a defensive look that they had specifically prepared for, they told us, coming into this one. Certainly seems like they're holding all the right cards now, doesn't it? Because of their preparation. Went back, watched the tape, studied the tendencies, and they feel like they had them down cold, and they were able to use the pass against them. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play. To throw, Hackenberg. Finding time. And this is caught. First catch by Brandon Marshall. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. And the completion, nice throw, nice catch. But Charles, big thanks goes to the men up front. They allow the quarterback to throw out of the rocking chair, so to speak. Plenty of time to survey the field and find an open man. The tight end, Julius Thomas, the intended target. And it's third down. And the big boys up front in the trenches, what do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. 
Off the play fake. Hackenberg. And that is incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again. And that brings up fourth down. Right, let's go ahead and try and get into the body and the mind of the linebackers. Yeah, I know they're bigger and stronger than I ever was, but in this situation, they understood what was going on as much as the offensive guys. Because the offensive guys are always taught, find the first down sticks and make the play. Now, defense, what do you want to do? Guard the first down line. Make sure they don't get there and tackle them in front. They were able to drop in their zone coverage figure out where the first down line was, and end up making the play, swatting it away so they couldn't get the completion. Throwing right, and that's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play-action pass, a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field. Fighting his way in for a Jets touchdown. Jamal Charles, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jets have taken a first quarter lead. Solid job up front, really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run, end result, six points. Touchdown. Charles the low set back. And he'll get it up the middle. Oh, a little 360. Oh, <laughs> 20. Jamal Charles, nobody in front. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. And the defense will accept this penalty and force the offense back. Following the penalty, here's Charles. And he'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it's a first down for the Jets. And I tell you what, partner, I think this guy's going to like running behind his new offensive line. I agree with you, and you can never have enough good runners. They usually provide a nice little spark with their new team. And all the way in, touchdown, New York. Jamal Charles with his second touch. tight ends and some room to maneuver cut back left sideline and all the way down to the seven yard line now jamal charles uh oh might be in some pain here remaining down on the ground we'll check on his status when we get back Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go now. Now a play fake here on first down. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. Berg on second down. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Down here in the red zone, you know your tight end's going to be a favorite target. Couldn't hang on. And sometimes they just have to get out of their own head because they understand how tight windows are there and how many bodies are there. And sometimes they just overthink it and don't catch the ball. Eric Decker, the intended target. And it brings up fourth down. On now is Nick Folk in the field goal unit for the Jets. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And that was a nice play. He knocked it away, but obviously you want the interception in this situation. You want to take it.
It's a four-receiver look to the right side. Now Hackenberg. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And the dreaded face mask penalty, that's going to cost him 15 yards. And it's such a dangerous play. Body going one way, and then your head gets yanked back the other. 15 yards is the right call. To throw, Hackenberg. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. There goes Green. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Virgil Green, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jets are going to add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call. But he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. On for the extra point is Folk. And now it's blocked. And all the defense has it. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. And this is caught by Jackson. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Back in Berg on first down. Oh, he can't hang on. That was a dream chance for any D lineman to possibly get a pick. But instead, it falls down incomplete. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. First down, Hackenberg. To Decker over the middle. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And Folk's kick is good. And that will swell the lead to 16. So they... And he still doesn't have a catch. We're into the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely. That was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. Hackenberg from the gun on third. And he finds Julius Thomas. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. He went full scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. Looking again for Thomas, this time complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And a nice little pass and catch there on the corner route. Set up very well by the receiver with a head and shoulder fake inside before he comes back downhill to his quarterback. Green's got it over the middle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. So he got his hands a little too far outside. The ref caught him through the flag. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. Hackenberg again. Right side, there's Decker. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup. And that'll make it second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. To the air again, Hackenberg. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Missed. Missed. This will not go down. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 19 yards on the pickup there. And now they'll have it first and goal. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. They'll throw again. Hackenberg. And this is complete. It's Marshall. And the spin looked pretty, but more for style points as the real estate evaporated quickly there. Defense may be thinking pass. They come out in the nickel on third and goal. Escaping the pressure right. He can run. And it's a touchdown for the Jets. Christian Hackenberg. His second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. A good call. And that one drops incomplete as he got popped as he was throwing it. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good, but when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion as we just saw there, that's winning football. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now Jones rolling to his right. And this is incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And little connection there they go with the corner route and it works out well and the best way to set up the corner route is to throw slants throughout the ball game so that when you're able to get back outside the defender has to respect the inside game to the right side here the tight end thomas they'll get 17 yards there and the jets are going to have a first down and looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter but still not afraid to throw it as they show there you want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. 
six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner. see this one out after this so it's Jets football as we get your reset here and let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over they go play action here on first down sliding out of the pocket he rifles one that's intercepted picked off here by Jimmy Smith and a big turnover Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the...